She is here, uh, but let's see if there's anything first. I'm actually curious about that little... Uh, oh, oh, here. Puzzle. Puzzle on a chimney cat. Ah, there I was, and there I was. Think it was just a run of the mill cityscape. Well, never underestimate a chimney. One one nine a friend for Y. Here are several letters divided into three groups. The group on the left contains M and U, the group in the middle contains H and O, and the group on the right contains C and E. The middle group has a special features of both the left and the right groups. What? Now Y has come along, but which group should it join? Wait, what? The middle group has special features of both the left and the right groups? The hell? Much, much, much later. Why would you say that? The whole H and O. So it's either pointing me that they, it's this one here that is supposed to be special, or it's not this one here, probably one of these two, right? So let's go with one first. Do it, I think. Puzzles are made for solving. I sometimes don't understand the logic in these puzzles anymore. Uh, so that's what I meant by special characteristics. Okay, okay. You did it. Why belongs to a group on the left? The letters are divided up according to their shape. The letters on the left have a vertical. Lars on the right, horizontal line seven. Ah, okay, 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 I get it, I get it. That was a lot of fun doing that. Keeps the fiat puzzles like that, Cheryl. There's a good dog. Don't get your hopes up. It was just a little stroke of luck. I can't understand before I found a puzzle. I'm really just being curious. Because I get it, the London Tower is a... Also, hint when they're nice. The London Tower is a... Iconic landmark in Britain. But it, technically speaking, the Big Ben isn't the clock, it's the bell inside it. So... If the London Tower was destroyed by for whatever reason, but the... The... The bell was still intact. Mm. Would the people actually want to rebuild a tower to put it so that it would make the Big Bang, or wouldn't it be the same? I'm legitimately curious about that. Okay, that one's a bit of a dick move. That one I can actually see, though. Another puzzle? I thought you might find you here, Piper. Catriel, you always know me very well already. It was a simple case of reduction, actually. It was? I already had an inkling when we stepped through the door into the mirror's chamber. You did? I I never noticed any giveaway signs or anything. Once I saw that our chamber was empty, then I just knew. You just knew? So it didn't deduce anything then. It was just a hunch. As I'm sure you like, Inspector. Hunches, bonus inspirational insight, are a part of a good detective's toolbox. I'm sure that's what makes you so good at your job. You have wonderful instincts. Thank you, Piper. You see, Inspector? Hmm, yes, well. So, Piper, what are you uh, going doing out here on the balcony? Oh, I was just moving something over. I came out here for a change of scenery. It's a puzzle, actually. Perhaps you could help me solve it. One eighteen mystifying month. Uh, let's see. From left to right, we have a per we have person A, person B, and C. Based on their comments, figure out which each of their own birth month. C was born two months after me. A and I were born exactly six months apart. B was born in the month where number 
So whose number is three times bigger than mine? Select the box to give the answer and figure the example. One for January, two for February, etc. Okay. So this is gonna be a bit of a puzzle, a math deduction puzzle. Uh, let me turn the gears in my head. Just a second, guys. A lot of boring math later. Ironically enough, I think when you start with... Hmm. Because here's the thing. A says that she was born two months after me. So, for example, he was born in January, she would be born in March. Okay, that's what we got. B. A was born exactly six months apart. So, for example, he was sick. If he was born, then she'd been six, June. But C here says that B was born in the month whose number is three times bigger than mine. Which isn't a lot, of, which doesn't give us that many options. Or more like it diminishes our options. So... Because... Mm. So let's start with... 6 for you. 12 for you, because 6 months six month apart. And for you, it'd be 2. Right? I've seen how to solve this now. Puzzles are made for solving. That's more math than anything. You did it, happy birthday. Whose birthday might it be today? I have absolutely no idea. So that's the trick. Well, I never would have thought of that. Thank you. Oh, it was nothing, really. Now I can get back to looking at those papers. You're working hard, I see, even though it's a bank holiday. Oh, it's not work, really. I enjoy reading through documents like this. I, get, I think it's Pipper that she said. Pipper, it's me you're talking to. We both know that's not true. Well, you're all... You're all working with those Godwin's Day, aren't you? Those long faces don't look like they belong to people of a social, on a social call. Oh, well, um... The thing is, it's Inspector Hastings' wife's birthday today, see? But, but because of the bank holiday, we can't find anywhere open to buy her a present. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I've been so busy at work, I clean forgot. You forgot?! Inspector, shame on you! It's only a once a year. Birthdays are very important, you know. Jesus Christ. Erm. Um, birthdays are a time to celebrate your arrival in this world, in this wonderful world of ours. You should always be the center of attention on your birthday. You should be the happiest day of the year, of your year. Who? Honestly, a husband should never ever forget something so, so important. Except they kind of do all the time, so... really? Even you somehow persuade your wife to forgive you, I won't! Jesus Christ! I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to say. Worship... Worshipful Mayor. <laughs> oh, that's the Piper I know. Deeply passionate about all kinds of festivities. Yes, I am. I, I've tried, you know. I've been running all over the city today looking for a present for my little Emma. But everywhere is shut! It doesn't look like it's going to be possible to buy a present today, which is why we've come here to see you, Piper. Why me? Well, because I know you're always thinking of what people need and what will make people happy, isn't that right? I thought, you, of all people I know, you'd be the most likely to come up with a good idea for a present. Hmm, well... I'm flattered that you thought of seeking my advice. Yeah. It seems to me, Inspector, that your approach is the wrong way. You've been in town of finding a present for your wife, but the truth is, material things don't make people happy. Not truly. I mean, you're not wrong, but I sure as heck would be, be able to fill the void in my life if I had a lot of money. That would probably help. Yes, I suppose the Riverside Festival is a good example of that, isn't it? It's not a material object, but it certainly makes a lot of people happy. Exactly. So I suggest you stop thinking about a present and start thinking about what would make your wife happy. Yeah, 
Yes, that's brilliant advice. Haha, <laughs> well, I can see that you know better what I'm talking about, Katriel. But, hang on. A birthday without a single present? That can't work. Can it? Hmm. I think perhaps Inspector needs a little more time to catch on. He's not very good at understanding one's feelings about it. Okay, I don't want to call that more like the Inspector not being good. Like, that's pretty much like every single man in existence. I'm sorry to say. To say. Boy, I'm still here, you know. Uh, it's no use. I've had it. I haven't got on anything and the day is almost over. You also have a problem with that kind of attitude. Don't get sword and just try to relax. Tell me, what do you think about the view from the from this balcony? Oh well, it's beautiful really. How about you, Inspector? The view? Well... As if and his crimes going down there, it's too far away for me to see it. I think it's sunny. It's beautiful in the evening sunlight, like now, but at night it really comes alive. Yes, you showed me the view from here. Oh, sorry. You showed me the view from here over the city lights once on the night of the Riverside Festival. It was breathtaking, actually. For some reason, however, however tired I'm feeling, looking at this view gives me a new wish of life. It gives me the energy I need to keep on on with my work. And that night, when I look at each little pinprick of light and imagine that's a family living in my city, this makes me want to do everything I can to be a better mayor. Well, when you put it like that, I suppose a bit more than just a view. Haha, <laughs> that's right, isn't it? Oh, sorry, that's right, it is, isn't it? Why don't you, you all stay and watch as it goes dark? You don't belong now. I wish I could, but things isn't on my side. But time isn't on my side today. No, that's a shame. I'm sure you could get a for the time if you do good. Perhaps, uh, sorry, that's a shame. I'm sure if you could afford the time, it would do you good. Perhaps you'd even think of a good idea to please your wife. Well, thank you very much for advice, P Piper. Or Piper, you got some thinking to do now before this evening is properly upon us. Last one, okay. Ah, there. Hmm. I feel like speaking to Pepper has given me a seed of an idea, but it's not, not quite from yet. So yeah, you also didn't quite get it as well, cat. So don't be so hard on Inspector. Don't give up, Miss. This is a tricky case, but I know you can solve it. No, forget it. Even it's upon us already. We've basically run out of time. Oh no, Inspector, it's too soon to throw in the towel. You owe it to your wife to keep on trying until the last possible moment. No, look. I appreciate everything you've done, giving up your day off to help me. It's more than I deserve. But it's nearly the end of the day. I can't leave my poor limo on all but in day, can I? The sad thing is, I'm always thinking about her. I wish I could have made a birthday special like she wanted. But I've only come as myself to blame. Looks like I'll just have to go home empty handed. Don't waste any more time on me. Go home yourselves and I'll at least enjoy what's up the day, eh? Inspector. Gosh, poor man. He looks more old than usual somehow, don't you think? I feel like we've let him down now. I wish there was something we could do. If the man himself has given up, though, I think we'd better head back to the office. Oh! Huh? What the? What the heck is this? Who the hell are you? Oh, we didn't catch you late. And... Hello, Dean Delmona. What a pleasant surprise bump you into you here. Who? I'm as surprised as you, yes. Who is this old mop head? This is the the dean of the 
Wesson Heller University. So, he's an old acquaintance of Miss Slayton. Oh, I wonder if I made all this was, an, an, was actually inevitable. What do you mean? Well, my granddaughter has sent me another puzzle, you see, but it's got me stumped. I can't think of anything more, more likely to be able to solve it than you, Katriel. Thank you, out of nowhere. 120 funny fractions. The professor has written a sum on the board. Sorry. The writing on the left expresses a fraction on the right. In that case, what number should go on the empty space at the bottom right? Uh. I want to say it's a hundred. Why? I don't know why. Just, it just feels so odd for it to be... Because I'm not even looking at the puzzle anymore. Just look at the box here. Uh, I'm just looking at this little box here. Because why would it be three digits? If you have three spaces, it's not going to be a three digit number. And why would you... Okay, so I'm looking a bit at the puzzle, but so if it was one tenth for this, then this here would have to also be like one zero zero one. I don't know how to explain, but it just feels like this. This is an interesting one. Any mystery or any Woo, I'm right. You did it. The writing on the top says 10%, which is one tenth. And the writing on the bottom says 1%, which is... Oh! Uh, okay, I get it. So the percent there is so big, they're looking like another number that's messed up. Okay, I get it now. Thank you, that's marvelous. My little, my little angel will be, please, will be so pleased. I'm happy I could be of assistance to you, Dean Delmona. You don't look like your usual, usual cheerful self, Katriel. Something on your mind? You're very perceptive, Dean. Actually, I'm a little stunned myself. I'm working on a very difficult case. Well, perhaps I could help. Why don't you tell me all about it? Do you know Inspector Hastings of Scotland Yard? Well, it's his wife's birthday today. Ah, yeah, oh yes. I've certainly heard of him. News of the exploit is always in the papers. Yes, well, the thing is, he forgot it was his Miss Hastings' special day, and he failed to get her a present. Oh, oh, so that's a wig. Oh dear, that's a predicament. We've been trying desperately to help him find something, but we've drawn a blank. She'll be so disappointed that he doesn't even manage to wrestle a present for her. Mm, yes, I see. Well, listen carefully, Catriel. Presents are all well and good, but they're not the be-all and the end-all. That was a lot of alls. I don't quite follow. Haven't you ever heard of the expression, is the thought that counts? That doesn't mean thinking about a present necessarily. It's thinking about celebrating together. About all the things his wife does for him. About how much he loves her. Personally, I say telling the woman how he feels about such things would be far more valuable than any gift could ever be. Yes, telling her how he feels about her. That was such an obvious choice. I don't understand how it can be so difficult for most people to see that. Gosh, it's all very romantic, isn't it, miss? Thank you, Dean. You've given me something to chew on. Well, good luck, young lady. And don't give up. Your father wouldn't, would he? Anyways, I must be off. Do share a face at the university sometimes, won't you? I have a feeling that's gonna be our next case. Don't give up. Well, I don't want to be this... I don't want to be this certainly isn't easy. Oh, sorry. I brain farted there. Well, I don't want to, but it certainly isn't easy. We've more or less lost the last of the daylight now. Time's up, isn't it? You mustn't neglect yourself, Miss Layton. You need to put your feet up sometimes. Why don't you go back to the office now? I just feel like I'm on the brink of a great idea. Uh, what to do, what to do. Feeling appreciation. Hmm. 
Now I think we can go to the transfer lane. How strange. What is it, pinstripes? It just feels different here somehow. Even though nothing actually appears to have changed. Do you think so too? When I pause to think about it, yes, it feels sort of desolate. Aha! It's because there aren't any people about. That th that's it. Yes, you're quite right. The street is totally deserted. Nothing happening on Chester Lane? That's unheard of. Perhaps because we talked to everyone here before, perhaps that made them disappear. What? That, that can't happen. Can it? <laughs> no, Ernest, I was only joking. There has to be someone about. Let's head to the street, to the office. I'm sure we'll find some signs of life there. So quiet. There's no around here either. Wait a minute, over there, look. There's someone. The last man is standing on Chancellor Lane? Stop being creepy. I wonder why there are so few people around, though. Perhaps we should ask the man over there. Oh, this guy again. The guy we ended up talking in the beginning. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Would you, would you happen to know why there's nobody about? Hey, <laughs> the answer is simple. It has to do with a special day that it is today. Today, well, that's Godwin's day. Yes, indeed. A day of rest for all of London's inhabitants. Everyone must be home soon, safe in their house. The children had a play back inside. Everything still like this. Road to home. Four children all live in different houses. They're all talking about the road they take to get home. Here's what they say. Hey, I don't have a, to cross a single bridge. I cross a bridge with a lamppost once. I cross a bridge with a lamppost once. And then I cross a bridge with a tree. I cross a bridge with a tree once. All the children are starting from different places and take the shorter route home, which is B house, B's house. Uh, I don't know which one of them is B, but okay, let's see. Yeah, I crossed a bridge with a lamp, lamp post once. So maybe four. I've seen how to solve this now, and that's how it's done. I'm gonna be completely real with you guys. That was completely and utterly. Sheer dumb luck. Though I won't deny there was a teasy bit of logic applied there, but still not much. You did it! Each tile I had was each house way back home is marked on this plan. It's getting pretty dark already, time to get home quickly. Only, only some of those bridges are lit. Oh it's just oh Road home. Hey, 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 I'm glad you saw that in time. It seems you aren't aware of all the traditions of Godwin's Day. All the traditions? What do you mean? This is a day of rest, a day when no one wor no work is to be done. But that is not all this day dictates. Whatever though, fun though has to has by day, come even tide, go home to play. That's the old. Adagi, I don't know what that means, of Godwin's day. You mustn't forget it. Look around you. Others haven't forgotten, have they? Be gone, home with you. This your break an important tradition. Come, even tide, go home to play. I've never heard of that little rhyme before. Well, I'll explain what a sweet is as dead as a dodo. So at the end of Godwin's day, everyone is at home. That's it! I've got it! Took you long enough, cat.
this present mystery is history. You've come up with something? I don't believe it. I'll explain everything later, Cheryl. For now, I need you and Ernest to do something for me. Anything you say, miss. Anything at all. Fine, I'll buy it. Although Super Sneak doesn't deserve it, he's always calling me a she. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Listen carefully and do exactly what I say. What are you going to, what are you going to do, Miss Layton? I'm going to go and fight Inspector. But it's too late, surely. It's over, isn't it? Not at all. It's just about to start. The present I have in mind will only work after dark. Dark. Anyway, never mind that for now. Just follow the instructions, please. It looks so pretty. Nice, isn't it, love? Not so many lights tonight. I suppose most people are asleep. We haven't come here for donkey's ears, have we? No. Nah. Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, did you... Did you do that for me? Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and to think I was annoyed with you for not getting me a present this year. Honestly, you... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Cat, I don't know how to repay you. You really saved my bacon. <laughs> Just look at all those lights, eh? Blimey. <laughs> Actually, it's thanks to you that so many people agreed to turn on their lights like that tonight. Thanks to me? In order to spell out the words, we delivered notes to 186 separate households. This is what I wrote. We are asking you to turn on all your lights when it gets dark at the end of the bank holiday. You'll be helping to deliver a message for one of London's most faithful servants, Inspector Hastings, CID. You what? Everyone who turned on their lights tonight did so as an expression of gratitude to you, Inspector. For all your hard work and devotion to your job, for keeping us all safe. Well, I don't know what to say. Thank you, London. And thank you, Kate. Riel. Um, let's not forget. Pinstripes and I were the dog's bodies that actually posted all 100 and... Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> My poor paw! Miss Layton, a parcel's arrived for you from Inspector Hastings. Ah, a little thank you, perhaps. Oh, what's this? One of my Little Lemon's homemade cakes for you to say thanks for the other day. Enjoy. I wonder if this is a reference to... to Professor Layton, because in his older games, they, uh, at least in the one and two, because uh, those are the ones I saw, there was this inspector that apparently whose wife was a baker or something like that, they made cakes. He loved the cakes his wife made for him. I wonder if that's a reference for the, to that. <laughs> Gosh, that does look good. Oh, wait. He's written more on the back. It's our wedding anniversary coming up, so you might want to get thinking about that. Sorry, sorry, I was trying not to laugh out loud by Jesus Christ, Inspector. Really? Ha! Huh. Who does he think I am? Catriel Layton, private detective and party planner? Why not? It does seem to fit. <laughs> and so Inspector Hasty celebrated his wife's birthday with her in style. The Battle of Hastings has was won. And not a single eye lost. 
But next time, Inspector, plan your own parties, or you'll get one guy from me. Jesus.